Hey everybody, my name is Jerry and I'm glad you could join me. Today we're talking about the 2017, 18, and well even the 19 Suzuki GSX-R 1000R and the 1000 ABS. We have a part one, if you haven't watched that, go ahead and watch that first. Basically guys, we're replacing the entire brake system with stainless steel braided brakes, brake lines in the front and the back. We're also going to be removing the ABS pump and there's a lot that goes into that. We'll get into that probably in part three. So this is part two. You know, I want to take the, the time right now since um, getting into this pretty deep um, to talk about why do we do this? You know, what's the big deal? Why do we put stainless steel braided brake lines on the bike? Why can't we just use the stock uh, brake lines? I mean, Suzuki knows what they're doing, right? Well, yeah, Suzuki does know what they're doing and, and they make a really great bike. Uh, let's talk for a moment why we actually do this. In a nutshell, rubber will expand when it gets hot. So imagine that this is the diameter of a rubber hose, okay? Now normally, under normal pressures and normal temperatures, it's going to hold its integrity. In other words, it's not going to get smaller and it's not going to get bigger. It's pretty much going to hold its integrity under normal operation. Okay? But when you begin to ride hard, like I do, and like a lot of you do, on the streets, track days, or even you racers out there, what happens to the rubber hose? It starts to heat up. Okay? Because the brake fluid starts to get hot. It gets hot because you're using the brakes a lot. Okay, now the brake components down, let's say near the front wheel, the brake caliber starts getting hot. The rotor gets hot, the pads get hot, and the brake fluid that's running in and around there, it starts to get hot too. And that heat transfers into the brake fluid and circulates to the entire brake, brake fluid system. And so, since the fluid is hot, the rubber hoses get hot. And what happens to the rubber hoses when they get hot? They begin to expand. Okay. So when you pull the brake lever, guess what happens? The hose expands. You let go of the brake lever, it contracts. And that's why you get that mushy feeling. This is literally what's happening. I pull the brake lever and it expands. I let go and it contracts. But it can get so bad sometimes where the, you know, the rubber hose on, let's say, a track day, it feels like spaghetti. And you got the brake lever pulled in all the way, let's say, up against your knuckle or even against the throttle and you can't go any further and you're running out of brakes and you got to pull it into pits and that, you know, you got to wait. I mean, basically your track day is over, your race is over. So, so in a nutshell, what do stainless braided, braided, stainless steel braided brake lines give to us that rubber hose don't? Well, the stainless steel braiding, think of it like a weave. Okay. It's like a weave. It wraps around usually Teflon hoses. Okay. Aftermarket Teflon hoses and that braided brake line holds the Teflon hoses and keeps them from expanding. The Teflon tries to expand when it gets hot, but it really can't because the braided, the braided aspect, the braided feature, if you will, the stainless steel braided feature, the weave, is holding it from expanding. Okay? So you might get a very small expansion, but very, very tiny, and then the braided part holds it in place. So there might be a small drop off in performance on the brakes, somewhere around your third or fourth, fifth lap when you're riding hard, and that's it. From that point on, they, they usually hold pretty good for the rest of the race, okay? Or a hard day on the streets or a track day, whatever. So that's exactly why we switch over to stainless steel braided brake lines. Hoping to get too technical for you guys, but I just wanted to explain why we do it. It isn't just to show off. It isn't just because we want shiny new brake lines. We're all trying to be cool. No, there's a real performance upgrade to putting on stainless steel braided brake lines, and now you know why we do it. Okay, so enough talk. Part two is coming up right now. Okay, guys, right now we're dealing with uh, one of the first steps we're going to do is drain the brake fluid out of the brake system. Okay, and you can see there there's a hose onto the bleeder screw. Now on the this bike, the bleeder screw is around the inside. I guess most of the bikes are that way. What a real pain in the butt to get to it. Okay. And that's with the air zapper brake bleeder system that I showed earlier. They give you two hoses, okay? So this is the hose that goes on to the bleeder screw, is that one right there, okay? And yeah, it's pretty difficult to get on there. I mean, I had to push on it really hard to get it on there, but it's on there, okay? So that's the first thing you're gonna do. Okay, next thing guys, we just take the uh, cap off the master cylinder, or, I'm sorry, the brake reservoir. So, take a screwdriver, take off the little 
cap holder and take the black cap off. Okay, at this point, guys, you can see that we've got the cap off. Okay, and do yourself a favor, get a roll of automotive paper towels, and you can see that I've got the components from the cap taken off. I put them right there, right? Now, let me see if I can show you a picture here. Show you something on the inside of this cap. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah, I think you can see now. See the water, guys? That's what they mean by hydroscopic. Brake fluid is hydroscopic. It will attract water. That's water right there. That was on the inside of the cap that condensed a little bit and stuck to the top of the cap, right? On the inside. Okay? This stuff is nasty stuff, so make sure you don't, you don't really want brake fluid in your hands, okay? So I'm just showing you that because when they say it's hydroscopic, they really mean it. Look at that. Look at the water in there. No matter how much you try to keep it out, seals and everything still sneaks its way in there. That's why after me even just a few months, six months of pushing hard, if you're racing and stuff, guys, you want to change your brake fluid often. If you're riding on the streets kind of mild, okay, every year change your brake fluid. If you're hardly ever riding, then maybe every two years, but... If you're like me, you need to change your brake fluid often. All right. Okay, at this point, guys, I've got the pump hooked up to the container. That one hose that we saw goes to the bleeder screw, okay, is right like that. See it? Okay. And it goes to one side of the, of the container, that side right over there. Then the other hose goes over to the pump and connects to the blue port. Now make sure you push that hose in there really good. You don't want it leaking when you get this pump fired up, right? Okay. And I just stuck a little piece of something on top of the uh, the container to keep it from moving around because it was trying to fall over because it's so light, right? So just stick something kind of heavy on there. Okay, and other thing is when you get this thing pumping, don't let it go above three quarters full. You don't want the you don't want any brake fluid making its way into the pump. The pump is pulling air. It's pulling suction, right? It's not, you don't want it pulling brake fluid into the pump, you'll ruin the pump. Okay. And the wrench is uh, anything that's eight millimeters. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, these kind of wrenches right here are really cool. That kind. If you got that eight millimeter and if you can get it over top of the bleeder screw, okay, then that, that's pretty cool, nice to use. But I, I'm using a tiny little eight millimeter one. Okay, so that's what we want, eight millimeter. Okay, and what I've been having to do, guys, to get in there is, I'm actually reaching this way with my hand, okay, I'm going all the way along like, like that with the wrench, okay, and I get in there and turn the bleeder screw from that way. Because there's just no room to get here with the wrench and hit the bleeder screw from this side. So I work from the front of the motorcycle like that and, it's, and it seems like it's gonna work, okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna crack open the, crack open the bleeder screw a little bit, loosen a little bit, and then fire up your pump and it should start pulling fluid. And you should be seeing the reservoir up there. Okay, sorry about the lighting, but that should be starting to go down, okay? Okay guys, so you can see that the pump is pulling the brake fluid. I don't have a lot of time here because I gotta watch everything, but I'm just showing you. The reservoir is slowly going down, okay? I just have the bleeder screw cranked open just a little bit, enough to pull it through, okay? You can see it's doing its job, right? The pump is pulling the brake fluid into the container. You notice there's no brake fluid going to this brake line. You don't want that. So again, make sure you don't let this this container here get above three quarters full, okay? All right. So that's how that works. Just motoring along, pulling it through, looking good. Looks like I gotta open up the bleeder screw a little more, so I gotta go off here. Okay, the reservoir is basically empty, right? The pump is pulling the last little bit through, right? Remember, right now we're just emptying the brake system of all brake fluid. We're not bleeding the brakes right now. We're just, okay. Because once we take this brake, these uh, banjo bolt, this banjo bolt off, we want as little as brake fluid as possible to come out of those lines, right? We don't want to mess over the floor. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, go to the other side of the bike and do the same thing, hook up the hose, do all that. 
At this point, we've got the brake system on the front completely bled out. All the brake fluid is out from the right and the left. You can see that the massive cylinder here, I'm sorry, the brake reservoir is empty. And when it was just a little bit in there, and I took a very clean uh, shop towel, brand new one, stuck it down in there and just soaked up to every last little bit that was just at the very bottom, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to take off this hose going from the master cylinder on this side, not on the reservoir side, but this side, the brake side, master cylinder side, okay? There's a little clip right here. I'm just going to take it off with a pair of pliers. You kind of pinch it together and then work it back. And once that's free and I got this hose off, then I'm going to unbolt this bolt right here and get the reservoir out of the way. Okay. And keep shop, shop rags at handy and close, right, in case you get some little bit of brake fluid, right? Right, so you can see that the brake hose is, the brake reservoir hose is disconnected from the master cylinder, right? And I took the clamps off on both ends and moved the clamps to the middle of the hose. When I took this this side of the hose off there, a little bit of brake fluid came out. I had a rag, shop rag, brand new shop rag right underneath it, guys. Okay, I didn't let any brake fluid drip down anywhere around this bike. Look at there's a paint. Your body works right below it. Any paint that drops on that, I mean brake fluid drops on that, probably just start stripping out the, the color. Okay, so I put a rag right underneath that little connection point when I pulled the holes off and sure enough some of it dripped out onto the onto the rag okay and then on this side I just took the clamp off the pair of pliers because they're the, the pinch kind and I turned the hose so that the hose is pointing straight up right because I need the last little bit of fluid I don't want it dripping down as I'm messing around getting ready to take this bolt bolt off here and take this brake reservoir off I don't want that hose last few drops dripping around on the bike you follow me Okay, makes sense. Okay, the next thing that I did is I took the pump, the bleeder pump, put the bleeder end, okay, and I stuck it on the master cylinder bleeder screw. See it right there? I cracked that bleeder screw open again with the eight millimeter wrench and turned the pump on. There was really nothing in there because we already sucked it down from the bottom when we did the front wheel, but I just wanted to make sure, right, because I don't want any brake fluid coming out of here when I get ready to take off the brake lines from this master cylinder. Brake line is, you know, right down in there. See it? So that's going to be coming up next. There's a little bit of a clasp right here that I already undid. It clasps the, some of the uh, wires going to the right control module. That's what this har wire harness is here. And it just clasps it to the, uh, the brake line coming to the master cylinder. You see this little piece right here? It just comes off. It's got like a little little uh, grippy edge to it you just push it in and pull it up and it comes off okay so pretty simple see it right there better in the light now yeah okay so at the top of the up here at the top of the bike still working up here you can see that I took the massive cylinder and unclamped it from the right clip on the right handlebar okay this is the other piece right it goes right here okay it's on there like that. You unbolt it, and I'm just I lay it aside right now for just for the moment. Take out the brake line on the bottom. See it down there on the left. Okay, and there's a little see that wire underneath there. That's for the brake switch, guys. Okay, I'll show you that once I get disconnected. Okay. Okay, guys. At this point, I got the. Let me just show you here. You can see there's the brakes brake switch connection. See it right there. You just pull it off and there's a the harness right here right you just pull it off you just got to give it kind of a tug there's no clip or anything you just pull it and it slides off the two posts okay so the next thing last thing to do to get the master cylinder completely removed from the motorcycle is a 12 millimeter bolt right here a banjo bolt and I'm just gonna unscrew it and take it out I'm gonna try to get this to point you know upward instead of downward and you notice that I have a shop rag here, right? Because there's probably going to be a little bit of brake fluid dripping. So, so that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, guys. At this point, you can see that I have the master cylinder completely removed from the motorcycle. Uh, the brake line that came up to the master cylinder. I said in, in the, my other video that there was two lines coming up to the master cylinder. I was wrong, guys. It's just one. Okay. The two lines actually 
uh, were down. You can see them hanging down there right now. The two lines actually were down at the at the uh, right side of the or the throttle side of the motorcycle's uh, brake caliper. Okay, that's where that long banjo bolt is. Okay, but we'll get into all that later. And you'll notice up here the single brake line that comes up that was come up the master cylinder. I just stuck a, a little piece of shop uh, rag in there because it could still leak a little bit, right? And I want I want this little bit of a shop rag to absorb. I want it dripping on the bike, so just a little. Little trick things like that you can do to keep your, your bike clean and not let brake fluid all over the place. Um, you know what, guys? Looking at this closely, I think we're going to be able to reuse the Suzuki brake reservoir. Because I know Suzuki tapped a hole right here. And that's where the brake reservoir bracket was screwed into there, okay? So what I do is... I put all my brake components that come in touch with brake fluid into one box, okay? And I think we're going to be able to reuse that brake reservoir with that bracket right there. And there's a hole obviously there and we're just going to reuse it. I think it's going to work. This way you guys, you don't have to spend money on that, that Brembo uh, brake reservoir kit if you don't want to. So I'm going to try to reuse the Suzuki one because anytime you can save a few bucks, that, that's fine by me. Okay. You'll notice I took the OEM Suzuki Master Cylinder and just put it in a box here and put a rag underneath it so if it leaks it's not leaking over everything else and any components that don't come in touch with brake fluid yeah, just stick them in a little cup here measuring cup I had laying around okay so do you want to keep all your parts together right you don't want to be losing them because this is stuff some of it get reused okay I might even reuse those banjo bolts because they're stainless and they're really nice we'll see okay so that's where we're at with this so far. Looking pretty good. I've already disconnected the brake lines down here on the right side. Okay. And you can see I got a shop rag below that too. So you drip, drip, drip. You know, we're not keeping it nice and clean here. And it did drip just a little bit when I took it, took it off the brake caliper, which is gonna be kind of hard to see here, but let's see if I can zoom in on it. It's not really not really bright enough down here, but let's see if I can get a good shot of it light coming in from the other side making it kind of hard to see but yeah it's right there okay and this wire here which was you can see there's clips there's like three or four clips that go up this wire okay there's another one here there's another one up in there they clip onto the brake lines that is for the front wheel sensor which is uh, hard to tell the light the way it is yeah there it is that's a front wheel sensor right there a little bolt you see and uh, that's for wheelie control as well as probably um, helps with traction control for differentiation between this front and rear wheels, stuff like that. Okay. All right, the front brake line, I'm on the uh, clutch side of the motorcycle here, okay? And the brake line I took off, shifter clutch side. And you can see it hanging right there. And that, this line just really loops over from the other brake caliper. Two, one line goes down to the front brake caliper, and then this one splits off from that caliper and comes over to this caliper. So anyway, there's a little bit of a... It's kind of hard to see here, but you'll notice right there is a little attachment on the fender. It pokes through the fender and holds this brake line in place. So I took a close look at that, hoping I could take the line off. It looks like the line and the little insulation that goes around that little clip is all one piece. I think that's the way they manufacture it. So I'm going to have to take the fender off. So that's the next step I'm going to do, guys, take the fender off, which there's just one bolt here. And then there's another bolt right there. You got to get it from the inside. So on that one... Um, I just think from the back side, you see my finger back here, right? You just, uh, there's a, uh, a bolt back there. You just got to take it off. And it's just on the other side of the rotor. So you have to probably use a, can't use a socket. You're going to have to use a wrench and come in like this, okay? Inside the fender to get to it. And then, like I said, take this one off. And then the same thing on the other side. And then the fender should slide out the front of the motorcycle nice and easy. And you just turn the brake line probably like that, and it should slide off between the forks. So that's what I'm going to do next, and we'll see how it goes. 
Okay, so I got the fender off. Took a little time because with the brake caliper still on, it gets a little difficult to take off. I didn't want to take the brake calipers off yet because I'm kind of using them as a uh, re reference point for some things. But um, yeah, so you'll notice that this brake line that comes over from from the throttle side to the uh, clutch side of the bike, it's you know attached to the fender here, right? And there isn't really a way to to take it off. You know, there isn't anything right there that just says, okay, I can, right? There's nothing here that lets you unclip it while it's still on the bike. You follow me? And it'd be pretty difficult to go underneath here. <clears throat> you could do it by hand and put and push it out if you wanted to. I think it's possible, but I just wanted to take a look at this really close. So you, I don't. I'm not saying you guys got to take the fender off. What you can do is just go underneath with your hand or a little, a little, uh, some flat edge and just push on that little piece on the inside and it should just pop this right out. But I just wanted to take a close look at it because I couldn't tell with it mounted. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing here that, this is all one piece. There's anything here that lets you take this off. At least not on the top side. Now on the inside, you know, you just push out the little, there's a little push. That's pretty simple. I'm just going to push in both sides. With a, I could probably almost do it with my hand right now. You just take a pair of pliers, really, or even just your hand, and just squeeze those two in there and push through, and it'll pop right out. And then I'll leave the fender off for now until I, because until I, I'm going to be putting brake pads on, new brake pads on the bike, as you guys know. So the brake calipers are going to have to come off at some point. But first, I'm going to run the lines and just see how they run down to the to the brake calipers where they're going to screw in. And then once I'm sure I like everything, then I'll take the brake calipers off and put the pads in. And then before I put the calipers back on, I'll, I'll remount the fender. Okay guys, so there's the fender with the, that's the back side over there. That would be the front side, so have it turned around. So you can see I have the brake line off now. And I'll probably just mount it back in without the little clip in there. I'll show you the clip right here. It's pretty, pretty simple stuff. You see how it has two little, tool okay really really simple stuff just separates see all right so you could put this just push this in back into the fender if you want it to stay on the bike so you don't want to lose it or and I may put it back on there I might just stick it on there but um You would have to run your brake line through this loop first, okay? With the GP style, it may or may not be a good place to route the the, uh, the brake line. I'll take a look once I get the brake lines ran. If I feel like it's going to be beneficial to run it through this loop, then I'll run it through the loop first and then push it back into the fender. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave it off. So I won't know until I get the, the brake lines routed to, down to the front brake calipers to know for sure when that this is worth putting back on. You know, and if not, that's fine. Just put it with my in my little bucket of goodies, and that's that for now. Okay, next, uh, is, got the front fender off. Okay, showed you all that. Next, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the seat off, bolt the gas tank right here at the top, here and here. Is it working underneath there? Because if we look underneath here, guys, you'll see that the brake lines are working their way back right up there, right? And there's a little bolt there on the right hand side. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. It's kind of hard to do. I'm underneath the bike, but let's give this a shot. I'm leaning backwards here. Alrighty. Let's see. You can see there's a little bolt to the right there, yeah? It's that little bolt right there. Take that off. Then this slides out. And we'll take a look at that once we get going. But first, I just want to see how all the brake lines route to the pump and everything before I start unbolting everything. A little observation first before we start wrenching away. I just want to show you guys something. Don't make the mistake I made. You see this once you once you take this uh, unscrew this hex bolt in here. See that little tab right there? See that? Right there? See how it broke once? I had to super glue it back together. So don't, don't make my mistake. It goes underneath the gas tank like that. See that? 
So what you want to do is you don't want to pull it away from the bike. You want to push down. You push down on the end of this little panel. Okay, when you get the screw undone over here, you push down and it comes out, okay? Don't pull away, just push down and away. Push down and it'll kind of pop out, okay? All right, and then this rest of this panel here, along with this is connected, these two are connected. Okay, so let me put the camera down because I don't want to break anything and I'll show you how it, gets, how it comes out of there. Okay, so the panel's off. You can see it's all off right there, right? This is how it was. Right, it went in there like that. See that? Now we already talked about how the front side, I pushed it down so I wouldn't break break it off, right? And this screw's right there. You can see the screw hole, okay? And then there's this part over here. Now on this part, way in the back there, you see that, see that right there? You don't want to just, you gotta be gentle. There's one right there too, okay? Okay? So there's one, that's that hole for the top one right here, for this one. And then for that one, there's a hole right there, okay, just above where the rear foot peg mounts. Now what I did, guys, is, when it's up like that, once I got the front part off, like I showed you, I put my hand back over here at the very end, near not, not the very end, but close to it, and I put my hand back underneath it. You can, you just kind of put your hand underneath there and try to get as close as you can to that and then gently pull out. You pull out and you kind of tip it up like that, okay? And as you pull and tip it up, the other one, and you work your hand over towards the towards the middle, and you pull that, pull them both out, nice and gentle. We're not in a hurry. We don't want to break anything, right? And it comes, it'll pop right out, okay? And then you do the same thing on the other side, guys. You just do repeat the process, okay, of the panel on the other side, right? So over here, you push down. Obviously, you take the screw out. There's that velcro, vel Velcro pad, you just kind of pull it out, it'll disconnect. Come all the way back here with your hand, get underneath it, just kind of pull out gentle and you'll feel it start pulling out and up. And then you work your hand underneath there and you pull out right in this area and the whole thing comes out nice and easy. And there's your panel ready to roll. Okay, I just storm, storm inside somewhere nice on the carpet or something so you don't mess it up, right? Wherever you're gonna put them, just somewhere they don't get banged up until you're done doing the whole job and put them all back on, right? So usually the last things you're putting on is stuff like this, right? Okay guys, to take the seat off, that's the bolt right there to take the seat off. I'm one on this side and one on the other side. It's a five millimeter hex, okay? Got a little shorty extension on there. You just work it out. I already loosened them up, but you can see them now turn it by hand. Take this one out, take the other side out, and then we just take the seat off. Once the bolts are out, you just grab the front of the seat right here and you lift up like this, guys. You just pull and lift at the same time and the seat comes right off, okay? Okay guys, next we're going to take the battery out because you can see here's the ABS pump, right? This is probably the rear brake side because the ABS also goes to the rear brake. This is probably the front brake side. I don't know that for sure, but that's just based on what I'm looking at here. I think this routes down to the rear brake. This goes to the front probably. Okay, I already loosened this, these two screws here, okay, for the brake terminals. And I'm just going to pull this battery out of there and get it out of the way because I can already tell getting down to this pump is gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt. There's a mounting screw back down, way down in there. So there's some wiring harnesses in the way and we're just gonna <laughs> take our time and go at it. So first thing is get the battery out of the way because I just don't want any brake fluid leaking around the battery and plus it's just gonna give you more room to work. Okay, the battery's out. But before we go any further, before we start monkeying around with unbolting any of this and there's probably gonna be some brake fluid, especially on this side because this goes to the rear brake and we haven't drain the brake fluid out of the rear brake system yet. But yeah, I'm gonna take this off right now and take a good look at this and just see how to get the brake fluid out of this side because this is the line that goes up to the um, to the ABS pump, okay? So we wanna to try to get all the brake fluid out, out of the pump as much as possible so that up here when I'm unbolting stuff, I don't have brake fluid spilling down into the bike, right? The rear brake, the way it's set up has to be replaced. And I'll tell you why or at least has to be rerouted. So here's a brake reservoir, which I just unbolted this for a second, okay? And what happens is, let me see, get the camera back up here a little bit. When you press the brake pedal, okay, obviously you, you're pushing brake fluid. 
Okay. Well, guess what happens? The brake fluid goes up, goes up to the ABS, routes up here, comes up here, comes to this side. I'm not sure which one's in. Okay. The electronics, there's an electronic module over here, is inspecting the brake fluid and all the computer. The EMU is doing a bunch of work here to determine whether ABS should start pulsing. Okay. The, the line comes, the fluid comes back out of the pump, comes back down. And even though it's hard to see it, see if I can get it for you here. Right down in there, there's a brake line. See it? And it goes to a block. Okay, and it's behind all these wires, which is you know impossible to see. But there's a there's a block back behind all this. See it right there? It's like a. This is the line that comes out. And what does it do? goes along the swing arm okay goes along the swing arm and makes its way all the way back to the rear brake back there okay that's the line right there going back to the rear brake I mean to the rear uh, brake caliper okay and squeezing the pads so Press the brake, push the fluid, fluid goes up to the pump, comes out the pump, comes back down, goes back to the rear wheel. Okay. So if you're going to take out the ABS pump, which is what I plan on doing, you can't use this plumbing. Right? We have to come up, I'm sure they sell it, and I'll look. But we want the brake pedal to push down. Obviously push brake fluid through the system straight back to the rear wheel, right? We don't want it going up to the pump, we want it going straight back. So i got to investigate that. So a little kink in the plans, but it's okay. I'll figure it out. Shouldn't be too difficult. Obviously, race teams are doing it, so I'm sure I can do it too. We'll figure it out, right? So uh, I'm gonna still gonna drain this part of the fluid and get it out of the get it out of the pump because I gotta take the pump out of there, and then then we'll figure out which parts need to get this converted over. Okay, and um, and yeah, and continue on. First, get this camera to focus. Okay, so next thing is we're gonna drain the brake fluid out of the rear brake system or the rear brake lines to be specific. And remember this also, the rear brakes also <clears throat> um, go up to the ABS, right? The fluid goes up to the ABS and routes back down to the rear brake here. Okay, so same thing as before. Okay, we're gonna take the pump, right? Take the pump right here, right? Take the end and just put it right on the bleeder screw, right? And I'm going to fire up the pump. Okay, at this point, I got an eight millimeter wrench on the bleeder screw, and it's you know almost loose. I just kind of cracked it back a little bit. So now I'm going to open it up and let's see if we get any brake fluid coming out of there. <clears throat> There's nothing coming out of there now, and of course it helps if we open up that first. Da da. Okay, so we have the rear brake reservoir cap off, right? And we've got the wrench, eight millimeter wrench on the bleeder screw. And remember, we're just trying to drain the brake fluid out of the rear, rear part of the brake system here, the rear brake lines. So far, I'm not getting any brake fluid, but let's see what happens when I turn the pump on. Nothing yet. I don't want the pump to be freaking out, so oh yeah, there it comes. There it comes, pump back on. And there it goes, guys. So the pump is actually pulling the brake fluid through the ABS system. Right? Look at that. Pulling it out of there. It's flowing pretty good. Okay. And you can see it's making its way down into the little brake container. It's doing it. Nice. Now I'll just keep an eye on this until it until it gets really like just a bunch of air and I don't see any more brake fluid being pulled out. And right now, it's almost empty. Look at that, Look how quick that happened, guys. Amazing. So some of this is coming through the ABS pump underneath the seat, which I already showed you, right? So we're just pulling all that brake fluid out. 
all of it's coming out. Kind of a nasty color too, to be honest. Still pulling it. Now this little pump, if it gets too hot or it, it if it feels like there's not vacuum, like it's not pulling anything, if it gets too hot, it'll shut off for like 15 minutes. That already happened to me once when I left it on too long. So, like I said before, you want to keep an eye on this container. You don't want to, look how nasty that brake fluid is. Oh my gosh, that's some nasty brake fluid. Uh, you gotta, you gotta wonder. How that brake fluid got that bad that fast? This bike has less than 4,000 miles on it. Okay. So that's that's pretty much empty. Okay, this is empty. Shut the shut the pump off. And yeah. Okay. We're empty. We even heard it, right? Oh yeah. All right. So that's it. The rear brake system, brake lines are are empty and uh, there's gonna be a little bit left in there somewhere guys there's always gonna be a little bit left in there but but most of it's out right all right so for now I'm just gonna tighten up the bleeder screw and uh, pull this off and then the next thing is gonna be working on taking the lines off the ABS pump okay guys that's the end of part two that was a lot of work and we still got a long ways to go I'm getting excited the next part's gonna be removing the brake lines the rubber brake lines from the bike removing the ABS pump out of the bike and we got to convince that computer that everything is still okay. So I'll show you how we're going to do that too. Hopefully that goes well. A um, little trick up our sleeve on that one. We'll see how it works out. So there's a lot, a lot to be done. There might be a, definitely going to be a part three, obviously. There may even be a part four. We'll just see how much content we can get into each of these videos. This one's already kind of long. That's the way it is when we're doing these serious upgrades. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Look for part three, part four, maybe a part five. We'll see. And um, I tell you what, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and click that Texas flag right there. You'll see over my head, there's a playlist of all the videos on this awesome 2017 Suzuki GSX-R 1000R. And right here, guys, there's two free short films. If you haven't watched them, click on the icon, go over there and watch them. And until next time, guys, we'll see you right back here again real soon.